Good afternoon, everyone. It is another magical day at Epcot. Today, we are going for a special dining experience. We're eating at a restaurant that I haven't been to in years. David, have you ever been there? I'm not sure I have. All right, today we are eating at the one, the only, Le Cellier in Epcot. Le Cellier is well known for their steaks, and today I'm thinking about the filet mignon. I have tried several steaks all around different Disney properties. That steak is on my mind. Thinking about the future of Epcot, and the fact that this will not even look like the same place anymore. All of it will be different. All of it. Would you like an appetizer before Le Cellier? Okay. Would you like an appetizer drink before Le Cellier? Not me. Club Cool, not one of David's favorites. And we're about 30 minutes late for a reservation. I have a feeling they'll still be able to seat us. Might have to wait a little bit, but I think they'll be able to accommodate. Entrees include steak of all kind, including ribeye and filet mignon, half chicken dumplings, and the appetizers include cheese soup, might have to get that, French onion soup, iceberg wedge, farmhouse salad, artisan cheese plate, Wow. One of the things that I love about Les Cellier is the atmosphere here. When you walk toward the restaurant, it feels like you've entered into a garden realm. Let's, let's call it that today with waterways here, different flowers all around to kind of present you into Les Cellier. David noticed some of the construction up here. It looks like the rocks. It's not the rocks. It just kind of has that effect. So it kind of blends in as they're working on it. On a side note, the waterfall behind the Canada Pavilion is also down for refurbishment. We're late, but it'll be delicious. All throughout there is a great theme in Les Cellier. You can kind of see the cellar back there. You enter into kind of a a basement atmosphere. Imagine the basement, very nice artwork on the walls here, the brickwork on the walls, areas for seating. They are able to see us even though we're a little bit late, but uh, it'll take a few extra minutes. I've been told there's a hidden Mickey in the lobby. I'm going to find it now. Thanks to Andrea. I'm gonna find it. Usually pretty good at this. Oh, what, you found it? <laughs> what? David found it already. All right, I'm still, I'm still looking, I'm still looking. There's only so much lobby, says David. Hang on, give me a second here, I got it. I have a book of hidden Mickeys at Walt Disney World, but that's cheating, that's cheating. You gotta try and find it. Wait a minute, are, are this, is this it up here? Andrea's laughing at me. I can't find it. I see it, I see it. Very nice, yes. The wine bottles at the top there. Very, very nice. Walking down this hallway here, you can see that everything is themed to Le Cellier. Even the exit signs have a special theming. The restaurant itself is rather small. You can see it behind me, and it really does feel like you're in a cellar in France. I've heard it has some unbelievable food. Cannot wait to try it. It is a two credit. It's important to know if you're on the Disney dining plan. Ah, it's our turn. Here we go. So many good looking things on the menu from the cheddar cheese soup. I think that might be a must. And at least to split. I mean, David, I don't think you've ever tried it. Yeah, I think that's a must to split. And then the filet mignon is definitely the one I'm looking at. Very kind server Lisa recommended the poutine to split. And there are some great ones. They've got the beef poutine and the Les Celliers signature poutine. Now, poutine is like French fries with gravy and other things. They've got one with um, Canadian cheddar truffle and red wine reduction. She recommended the signature poutine. I'm tempted by it. I am. But the cheddar cheese soup is just one of those things that I want David to try. So you get to choose, but both are really good. So I got iced tea with my water as we were starting, and I said, you know, I'll take the sweet and low and sugar packets that come with it. Sure enough, she brought me this simple, what's the simple? Syrup? Simple syrup is what she called it. Looks like water, smells like water, pour it in, and it tastes super good. I imagine it's just kind of maple syrup reduced down. I have no idea. It tastes really good, though. I love the atmosphere inside Les Cellier. It really does feel like you're inside a cellar. The candles up above add to the ambiance quite a bit. It is darker in here, but Dave, it's not too dark, right? No, it's fine. Yeah, I feel like it's a, it's a really nice theme. Very small restaurant. So you will need reservations for this one, but very nice so far with the atmosphere. Happy birthday from Les Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look at the Les Cellier poutine. That is super large. Perfect for sharing. The uh, server poured the red wine reduction on top. We also got the bread as well. We gotta try the poutine, ready? All right, here we go. Not bad. Those are pretty good. Not bad at all. 
You know, that first bite I said, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of poutine. I've been um, having several more bites, and I really like this one. Like, I'm just starting to go like, second bite, ooh, much better. Third bite, oh, that's really good. Fourth, oh my gosh, and so, yeah, it's it's really good. So the poutine is a winner, we know that. The multi-grain bread, I thought was pretty good, definitely. So next one, sourdough. I think the best sourdough I had was in San Francisco, I'll be honest with you, but this is really good, really good bread. Yeah, Boudin Bakeries, yeah, that, wow. The pretzel bread's the best by far. I could eat it all day. And the poutine, also fantastic. I would call it a mild gravy. That's the best way to put it, kind of a mild gravy flavor in there. The red wine really brings it out. The combination of flavors is so good. Needless to say, David and I thoroughly enjoyed the Les Cellier poutine and that bread. Our server, Lisa, asked if we wanted more bread, but I think we'll save our appetites for that steak, which is on its way. Take a look at that filet mignon. Looks absolutely delicious. And David has the steak and fruitage. Looks amazing. Let's see how it tastes. Ooh, ooh, I'm seeing a positive look on David's face here. First bite of the filet, medley of spices as I bite into it. That is delicious. It's hard to put kind of a, a term on these spices. Kind of tastes well done. I'm gonna double check to make sure this is medium rare, but um, the flavor is unbelievable. David told me that I've gotta try the fry. Oh my gosh. The fruit is unbelievable. I wish I had better examples of the flavor. The red pepperish, standard pepper, smoked, a lot of flavors right there. Kind of a, a hickory-ish, hickory-ish taste on the inside. Wow. As amazing as this filet is, I wouldn't exactly call it memorable. That's the problem. It's delicious, but it, it somehow is second to other ones that I've tried. And I don't know why. Maybe I just like specific flavors. Delicious, unbelievable filet but not as memorable as I was hoping for. Lisa did confirm that that steak was much closer to medium or even medium well compared to the medium rare that I ordered. So she actually, a volunteer, she said, let me replace it for you just so you can get that full experience. Thank you to Lisa, really appreciate it. So we're gonna give it another try, but David's steak out of this world. And these fries make this meal right here. Amazing, amazing flavor. Perfectly salted, deliciously fried. Right. There it is, the medium rare filet. They double checked to make sure it was right. Very kind of them to go out of their way. Let's try it together. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Now that's a memorable steak. I think what I had earlier was actually well done. I actually do think that was well done. Compared to this, kind of like that pink in the middle, that's medium rare. That's delicious. Changes the flavor completely. I love that one. Absolutely love that filet. So this is an experience I haven't had before. When I tried some of Mike's filet, the middle, the pinkish part, wasn't chewy. And all of my experience in eating a steak, rare, medium rare, it's always chewy in the middle, which is why I like it more medium, more medium well done. That's really good. It really is good. Unbelievable the difference between medium well, basically, and medium rare. Definitely recommend close to medium rare. Delicious. Really fantastic filet. I've never had filet quite like this before. Where it's, David said it perfectly. It's not chewy in the center. It's, it's flaky. It just falls apart. Wow. There is something I should mention about this steak. If you love very flavorful, smoky steaks like Skipper Canteen, you may want to stick with that because this has more of just that meaty taste rather than that smoky taste. It's all about the flavors that you like. This, to me, is absolutely fantastic, but there is time for this and time for Skipper Canteen. David, considering other steaks we've had, other food we've had at Walt Disney World, would you call this meal worthy of the cost? It's a great meal. It's fantastic food. Really enjoyed it. At the price, which is almost double Skipper Canteen, I'm, I'm not so sure. Maybe special occasions, but the food really was good. It's, it's just a question of that price for me. Of course, at the end, there is a little bit of sticker shock with the bill. It is an expensive restaurant. That should be well known. But for the food that we got, I think it's good for special occasions. That's me. I thought it was a great flavor. I would come back not all the time, maybe once or twice a year. Overall, truly enjoy the experience at Les Celliers. Expensive, it definitely is, but in my opinion, absolutely worthy. We'll come back for special events in the future. You ever notice a little cottage back there? Nice. It's like a little mini house back there. Uh, banjo is rocking it. All the times that I've been to World Showcase, I don't think I've seen these signs. World Showcase Promenade France. 
World Showcase Promenade United Kingdom. Remember, this is the bridge to France right over there. Little details. I'm starting to pick up on a lot more of those details. David and I are doing a little bit more exploring right below the bridge to France. This is it. There's the UK right over there. France Bridge. Stairwell up. We're down here right by the water. Walking around, scouting out spots for illuminations viewing a little bit later. Looking at where we definitely want to experience the illuminations fireworks show. It actually, the boats sit over there. We have this nice open area, middle of the day, just to kind of relax. This really is a great spot right here. We may see illuminations right from here. It's a little bit early, it's like 8.05, but it is a great view of World Showcase Lagoon. Wow. After giving it some thought, even now you're going to see the fireworks right from here. Again, the bridge to the UK right over there. We're at that area that you can kind of come down if there's no special reservations. And we're at the lower level. We're going to see it from this seated area right here. It's going to be great. It's not common to be able to find a spot to sit down and enjoy Disney fireworks. I'm thinking maybe they should have more sit-down locations in the future, but I definitely like having a spot right here. It's nice. I love the fire illumination. I really hope that with the new show, there's some way to incorporate fire, some way. For thousands and thousands of years before us, to share the light and to share a story. Okay, so missing a few fireworks. Magical show, definitely love that one. The issue was there were a few fireworks missing throughout. David was absolutely right. There are definitely a couple missing. I don't know why, perhaps they're maybe running out of those fireworks. They wanna make sure they have enough for the very, very end. But uh, missing a few, still loved it. The music is what grabs me every time. It's the music, it's gotta be the music. I keep thinking about why it has that emotional connection. I think it's the music and the knowledge that I've seen this show with my family and even my grandparents, you know, who I, I came to Disney with originally, saw the show with me, and so it's uh, it's a very tying show to my family. It ties close to my family. Watch this color change. We went from like a yellowish, and then we're totally switching to blue. And I wonder if we're going to see more of these lighting effects in the future of Epcot and Future World. I would like them. I really do like to see. Look, you can even see it there. Yellow light, and then that bluish, purplish light right there. It kind of makes not only us look that color. Well, the ground is more of that purple hue as well. I, I really am hoping for lighting effects, great soundtracks. The future of Epcot, I think, is gonna be super bright as long as those things are there, and I think Disney knows that. Speaking of those bright and vibrant colors at Epcot, looking at Spaceship Earth like this always just kind of brings joy to me. I love seeing these colors. It almost doesn't look real, honestly, it does not. And I hope, again, in the future, future of Epcot, future of Future World, we see these bright, vibrant colors. I don't know what they would color it if it's not the purple, pinks, and oranges. I don't know what else they could color it. Maybe kind of a blue more than a purple, but the color goes so well. Now, if you're wondering how they get Spaceship Earth to look like this at night, they actually have lights around Future World. You can actually see them right there in the greenery, and you can see kind of a shadow of the tree right there, kind of bouncing around from the light on the ground. The lights are also over there above the restrooms. So they have lights shining on Spaceship Earth from basically every direction. Taking a look near the entrance of Epcot, we can see the lights are lit on the construction walls here. And again, I'm gonna call it the starry ground is still here as well. Also, if you're wondering about the lights for Spaceship Earth, right on top, right there, lights are projected up and over, making Spaceship Earth look like that. Thank you so much for sharing in the magic with us today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time. Have a magical day. See you real soon. Good.